What's going on guys, Rob with 3 Strong here. I have my little subject here. Oh. And, uh, I'm going to do the talking, not him. Um, I want to talk about how carbohydrates are broken down into your system and why this low carbohydrate diet is promoted as a way to uh, reduce body fat stores and therefore reduce uh, your weight. Um, and uh, I think once you have an understanding of how the body actually processes carbohydrates, you're able to make better decisions um, about your diet and you're not just um, saying that carbs are bad, all carbs are bad, we shouldn't have carbs um, because somebody told me that I shouldn't have carbs. So uh, from a physiology standpoint, this is kind of my background, from a physiological standpoint, this is uh, a basic little diagram of how your body breaks carbohydrates down into sugars and then how we utilize those sugars in uh, different ways in our body. So any carbohydrate we consume, boop, that's a little arrow right here, any carbohydrate that we consume, toss down the hatch, uh, is eventually going to be broken down into sugars. So it goes into our body. And, and even one of the an interesting thing, if you take like a saltine cracker or anything like that and place it on your tongue, what happens? It starts to dissolve. There are enzymes in our saliva that start the digestion process um, in our mouth. So when we're having something that is easily broken down, I mean, if you put a carrot, if you put an apple, if you, any, if you put anything fibrous, that doesn't happen as fast. You're just going to be sitting there with a carrot on your tongue for weeks. Um, but if you have something that is a little bit more flour, uh, uh, flour-based, anything that's easily broken down, any of those baked goods um, will be digested once it gets into your mouth. So it's going to break down even faster once it gets to your stomach. So we put the carbohydrates in, gets broken down, digested in our stomach, uh, goes through the intestines, and in the intestines now those nutrients, the sugars, are absorbed into the bloodstream. And once in our bloodstream, this is why they say, you know, your blood sugar level, um, you know, like, oh, my blood sugar's low, that means you don't have a high content of sugar in your blood at that moment, and therefore you don't have a lot of uh, fuel to use to say, oh my God, my blood sugar's low, my energy's low, um, or my blood sugar's high, or whatever. So the sugar now goes into the bloodstream, uh, but it just kind of sits there. And we need something to get it out of the blood. The blood is really just a carrier for nutrients. Um, the digestive tract breaks it down, but the blood is really the carrier, and that's why we have so many blood vessels throughout our body. It's the carrier of all these nutrients, and we need something to pull those nutrients out of the bloodstream. When it comes to uh, glucose, sugar, in our blood, insulin is that hormone that is released to pull the sugars out of the blood and deposit it to the parts of the body that need that fuel source's energy. Um, the first line is our immediate needs. That's why when we have something sugary, uh, if, if our blood sugar is low, that we feel so much better. You know, it's we've been depleted of that energy source. Now the insulin has been released to uh, uh, now be used as an immediate fuel source. If we consume a lot of carbohydrates and we don't have an immediate need for that within our cells to give us an extra energy boost or whatever, then it goes to the next line. That next line is muscle. If we have done a strenuous workout, a uh, really hard workout, and our muscles have utilized uh, sugar in the form of glycogen, we've used up our glycogen stores, now some of that sugar is gonna be deposited in the muscles. If we are sedentary and we aren't really using um, those glycogen stores, that's capped off. Then the last one is those sugars get stored as fat. Sugar is such a great uh, energy source for our body that we don't want to get rid of it unless we have other um, you know, metabolic things like diabetes. Our body will keep on to those sugars and be deposited as fat. The reason why this is an issue over time is insulin. If we have big... Uh, a, a large load, a sugary food that we eat, that's a large load of sugar in our system. Very large load of sugar. So the more sugar we have, the more insulin is released. Once we have a greater insulin release, therefore our uh, tissues get flooded with this sugar. And of course, if we have 
excess, well, there's more than we need right now. You know, the sugar rush isn't, uh, is only taking up some of the energy out of our blood. Uh, the muscles, no, there's extra boom, it's gonna be stored as fat. That's why when you have a very rich, uh, sugary carbohydrate-based uh, diet, that you can gain weight, you can gain body fat on that diet. By reducing this, what we do is we level off the insulin. We don't have as high of an insulin release, which therefore means that we aren't as likely to have as much uh, carbohydrate being stored as fat. And that's why keeping it, even when you are active, you do want some carbohydrates. You just don't want to load yourself um, up with big meals of carbohydrates because this insulin spike is going to overload the system and its default setting is we can't use it here, we can't use it here, we can store it here for later and then it's, it's uh, far more difficult to access it as fat. Okay, that is our little diagram. If that guy had a hand, I'd give him a high five, I'm gonna smack him in the face instead. Uh, that is how your body breaks down carbohydrates. I will see you tomorrow.